evening. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it is my birthday. And this has been a dream of mine to be on this stage. I am standing here. I'm not afraid to talk to you, but I'm afraid that I'm going to burst into tears because I am so grateful to be on this stage. <laughs> My husband and I have two young girls, and when they can't sleep at night, I tell them what helps me fall asleep. And I say, think of something in your life that's like a goal for you, something that you want to accomplish, and then imagine yourself doing it. And so for me, when I can't fall asleep, I picture this very moment that's happening right now. Like, this is a big deal. And the walkout song, is that not the most egotistical thing ever? If I was you, I'd want to be me too. I mean, I'm here right now. And I know many of you are standing or sitting in the audience here and thinking, I want to be on that stage one day. And those of you that have imposter syndrome, pay no attention to it. I was here at MozCon. My first MozCon was 2014. And I sat at the lunch tables and went, why am I here? I don't deserve to be here. Everybody here is smarter than me. They know way more about SEO than me. So don't listen to those voices in your head. I mean, if you have aspirations to be a leader in your industry, whether it's SEO or something else, it can happen. It can happen. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you today, first of all, about my walkout song. When MozCon asked me what song I wanted to walk out to, I said, I don't know. But realistically, when I have this vision at night when I can't sleep, it's this song, it's me too. If, if I were you, I'd want to be me too. But it seems so egotistical that I said, no, no, I can't do that. So when I was driving home the day that they asked me what I wanted my walkout song to be, I thought, well, I'll turn on the radio and get inspired and see what else I can walk out to. Well, the song that played when I turned on the radio was me too. And I looked to my right. I pass this building twice a day on my way to work, and I have never seen this. MCON Construction. <laughs> So it's a sign. So I am so excited to talk to you today about EAT and quality raters guidelines and so many things like this. And we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to speak super, super, super fast. Um, we know by now what the quality raters guidelines are. We know that there are apparently about 16,000 quality raters that use this as a textbook to learn what Google thinks is quality in web pages. I personally think that if something is in Google's quality raters guidelines, Google's already measuring it algorithmically or they want to measure it algorithmically. And we have all these arguments about EAT. Is it a ranking factor? So Ruth was, is Ruth here? Is Ruth, there you are. So Ruth's slide, she tweeted uh, a week ago about her slide, is EAT a ranking factor? No, she said. So here was my reply. I seriously. <laughs> I don't want to fight Ruth. I think she's probably not somebody you want to get in a fight with. She's <laughs> um, but I see what Ruth is saying. It's not like EAT is page speed or something that you know is a specific thing that we can say, if you do this, you will rank better. Um, EAT is so many things. And my goal today is twofold. One is to tell you why EAT is a big part of Google's algorithms. And secondly, what we can do to improve EAT. So we had this quote, uh, Ruth showed us this yesterday from Ben Gones, the VP of search at Google, where he basically says, look, if something's in the quality raters guidelines, it shows us where we want the algorithm to go. Um, it tells us fundamentally what we think the algorithm should do. And so the quality raters, there's a lot of things in the guidelines that instruct the raters, here's how you would determine whether this is high quality. I don't think that the process is necessarily the same for uh, Google's engineers. They get this information back, you know, and they, um, they are able to form their algorithms around this information. But I do think that the end result is basically the same. This, Google put this document out uh, just earlier this year, this guide on how they fight disinformation, fake news. There were a lot of really good things in here. And they talked about the fact that they get information from the quality raters and then Google's engineers can turn that into algorithms. 
The document also was the first time, to my knowledge, outside of Google's quality readers guidelines, where Google officially mentioned EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And they actually say uh, the ranking system is designed to uh, identify sites with a high level of EAT. So of course we wanna have EAT for our websites, for our businesses, for our authors, for all of these things. I'm gonna brag just a little bit. My team and I, pretty much all that we do these days is deal with sites that have uh, seen very serious traffic drops, usually in conjunction with a Google algorithm update. And we have lots of clients that see amazing results like this. Not everybody. There are some websites that come to us that we really can't help. But if you are a legitimate brand or you're working your way to be a well-known brand, um, this is something that is definitely possible. And so all of these sites, now we look at a great number of things with um, you know, technical factors and, and all sorts of stuff like that, but a huge component of what we look at is is there a thing that's in the quality raters guidelines uh, kind of laid out as a sign of low quality that we're not seeing on, the, or that we are seeing on this website? Are there things that this website can improve upon so that Google's algorithms can think that they have high EAT and that they're a site that deserves to rank well? Whenever I talk about EAT, there's always somebody who says, well, wait, wait, I'm a doctor uh, and I'm not ranking number one, so EAT is not a thing. I want you to remember that EAT is um, not just E. So there are three components to EAT. There's expertise, um, and that is, you know, do you actually do this stuff? We want to see that content is either written or reviewed by people who have actual real life experience in these topics. And um, I noticed in February of 2017, uh, that's where uh, all these people started coming to me saying my traffic dropped, it was February 7th, 2017. And what I was noticing was that technically the site was really good in terms of SEO. But in every single case, they were being beaten by people whose authors were real life practitioners of these things. They were beaten by people with more expertise. And um, so remember though that EAT is also authoritativeness, which I'm gonna talk mostly on for the rest of this talk, and also trustworthiness, which I don't have time to go into all of that. I have a post at uh, mariehaines.com slash trust. Uh, if you have seen drops with conjunction of, uh, with a core algorithm update, you should really check that post out because there are many things that Google is probably measuring algorithmically to determine whether your brand is one that people trust. And if you're lacking in these features, then it's a good chance that you're not gonna rank for any sort of meaningful queries. Um, We'll talk just briefly about on-page stuff you can do for EAT. I believe that every post, unless you are a name recognized, nationally recognized name in people's houses, um, you need every post to have an author bio. Every author bio should link to a full author page, not just the WordPress, like here's the posts that this person wrote, um, but a page that fully extols why this person is qualified to write on this content. And this is not just for search engines, this is for users too, because they have so many choices to look at uh, when they're reading on these topics. And this was an interesting thing that John Mueller said recently. We know that schema is not necessarily a ranking factor, but schema can help Google to connect the dots. It can help Google to say, um, this brand here is closely connected with this person, or this author is closely connected, uh, it's the same author who writes for this authoritative publication. And so I believe that all of these things we do on our site to improve EAT are just the start, are um, ways that we can basically help Google to figure it out and to connect the dots about what your entities are, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Last year at PubCon Austin, I asked Gary Eish, how does Google algorithmically measure EAT? And I didn't think that he'd give me an answer, um, but this is what he said. He said, it's largely based on links and mentions on authoritative sites. And so um, I'm gonna come back to this idea of mentions, but this is really, really important. So let's go back to the quality readers guidelines. And there are tons of places where they talk about what do experts say about your website? 
you know, here's another example. What do experts say um, about the information that's on your website? What do recommendations, are experts, are, are experts recommending you? And that's the type of thing that we need to look at. And some of you are probably thinking, well, that sounds a lot like PageRank, right? It sounds a lot like link building. And you're right. This is, again, from Google's guide to uh, how they fight disinformation. They say that the algorithms are identifi they're identifying EAT and that that's closely connected to PageRank. I have a theory, um, this is a theory, I can't prove it just yet, but I believe that for YMYL queries, which is essentially any query that really matters to somebody, that um, Google only wants to pass PageRank through sites that have a decent amount of EAT. Now, if this is true, it explains how they can be comfortable in saying that the Penguin algorithm is really good at just ignoring ultra-spammy links. So if you get these links from sites that nobody ever visits, you know, if you do all sorts of blog commenting spam, and in the past those things used to actually help, but now Google can say, well, these links come from sites that don't have EAT, and so maybe they don't count those. So the question that you're all asking then is how do we do this? And the title of this talk is Super Practical Tips on Improving EAT. And so I'm gonna start off by uh, talking about how we can identify who an expert is. So if you take a look at this forum post, this is very clearly not expert, an expert level SEO. Um, this is from the SEO chat forums, which sadly are no longer here. Just a couple weeks ago they were shut down. Um, this question is about when you do blog commenting spam, should you worry about your anchor text if there are no followed links? I mean, seriously, nobody would trust this person, right, to teach them about SEO. This is one of my favorite SEO websites. Take a look at the keyword anchored links to this person's client. Very clearly, you know, not expert level content, I would say. But the funny thing is, this is shared with permission. Uh, that first post was me. Uh, the second one is Joy Hawkins. Where's Joy? There's Joy. She shared me that with permission and I said, give me a photo of you like 10 years ago when you didn't really know that much. I'm enjoying you a lot more about SEO than I did in those posts. But look at us today. We both have the exact same facial expression when we talk. <laughs> I think, where's the photographer? The photographers always grab this like picture whenever I'm talking, I always look so angry. But the point is, we got here because of EAT. EAT is what got us on this stage. Joy's gonna be talking tomorrow. You all need to be in her talk. It's gonna be so good. Um, and so how, let's tie this all together. If we look at the Quality Raiders guidelines saying that um, Google recognizes authority when other experts on a topic are recommending you. So look at, you know, I'll get mentioned occasionally in search engine land uh, or in search engine Roundtable. Here's Joy being mentioned again in Search Engine Journal. Um, here's Joy again being mentioned in Search Engine Roundtable. Now, if you notice in this Search Engine Roundtable uh, post, Barry did not link out to Joy. Where's Barry? Barry. Barry. The very first time Barry mentioned me, I sent him an email. I said, Barry, could you link that? He didn't. <laughs> um, and, but still, that's a mention. That is a mention in an authoritative website. A recent Reddit AMA, this is uh, Patrick Stocks, who is an incredibly intelligent SEO, asked this question of Gary East. He said, hey Gary, what's the deal with mentions? They're not links, they don't pass page rank. How does Google use them? And Gary said, hey Patrick, it's for entity determination. Now we've heard some talk on entities already in this conference, and I wish I had more time to go into all of the stuff about entities and how Google can figure out your brand is an entity, you are an entity, your topic is an entity, and so Google's trying to figure out if you know, all these authoritative people in this industry are recommending you, well maybe you're an entity that's worthy of paying attention to. It's definitely possible for Google to algorithmically figure out who are the authorities, who are the websites sites that we want to recommend? Who are the authors that we want to recommend? So how do we do this stuff? And I'm just going to very briefly go through some of this stuff. It's really link building, um, building up the authority. That's not the whole part of EAT, but a lot of it is just really high quality link building. Now sometimes you can get uh, good links from Harrow, help a reporter out. It's a free way to connect with journalists. Um, if you can get journalists to cover you, your business, your story, in a way that's not like, here's a press release that I wrote, but in a way that's like, journalists are excited to talk about you, those are mentions that can help improve your EAT. 
Um, another thing is data. I, I laugh because I tried for like a year to say data instead of data, and I just can't do it. I thought it was a Canadian thing, but then Dana was here and she says data, so I'm horribly wrong. I don't know, but I, that's one of those things I'm not going to change. Um, if you have data, let's say you, I said it. <laughs> if you have, um, let's say you're doing SEO for a dentist. That dentist is gonna have all these statistics on maybe what is the first age, the earliest age that cavities tend to happen in your city, and then compare that with other cities. You can produce these posts that people will wanna reference, that people will legitimately want to recommend. Um, helpful information, this is, uh, according to Ahrefs, this is the top linked post on Joy's site, and it is uh, just very simple, how do you contact Google My Business? If you have a customer service department in your company, ask your customer service department, what are the questions people keep asking? Because if they're asking those questions, it means that they can't find the answer online. And so if you create articles that answer those questions, they're gonna get referenced by people, they're going to get links, they're going to get recommendations by experts. Tools, this is a tool that I put together in a weekend. My disavow blacklist probably took me about eight years to put together, but this tool was very, very quick. You can cross-check a cross -check a link across my blacklist and see if it's one that I've regularly disavowed. This gets me so many links. It gets me mentions all over the place from other authoritative SEOs. Tests are an incredible way to get links and mentions on authoritative sites. Um, this was a podcast episode from John Doherty at Credo, and I loved how Brittany was talking about how Moz uh, de-indexed a bunch of thin content and saw improvements as a result. Every one of us as SEOs should be running tests, and we shouldn't be afraid to talk about our, our results. Um, all the time, I'll publish something, and then people say, oh, but this and but that, and it's very easy to get almost shut down and say, I'm not gonna publish anything again. I think we all need to respect the people who are publishing things and go, you know, I might disagree with this point, but this is really good. Thank you for publishing it. Um, and so don't be afraid to publish your tests and your thoughts on what's going on in, in your industry. And then lastly is competitive research. Um, not to try to replicate every single link that your clients or your competitors are getting, but rather to see where are they getting links that truly were earned, links that truly are recommendations. So I wanna end with this quote from Bill Hunt, another incredibly smart SEO. Bill and I did a webinar just recently uh, together, and this is what he said, and it really, really made me think. If I link to you, what I'm basically saying to my readers is, I'm inviting you to leave my website and go visit this website. That's a big rep recommendation. And I encourage you to think about that as you're building links. So if you're doing guest posting, not all guest posting's wrong, but think about it, if you have a link in your bio at the end of the guest post, do you think that the owner of that website put that link there because they're saying, this person's really awesome, you need to go visit their website? It's a self-made link. Even if you link from within your own content in the guest post, it's a self-made link. And that's probably not the type of link that Google would consider a recommendation from an expert. So I want to encourage you to kind of think bigger in terms of getting links that are truly recommendations from other people, and that will help build up your authority um, in terms of EAT, which is probably one of the biggest factors of EAT. And again, there are many other factors uh, that we can talk about, but if you can get this, if you can get this point that you can get people to link to you because they want to, and not because they've been paid to or they've been given this content, but because they say, uh, this stuff is so good I need to link to it, then that's key. And because I haven't had a cat gif in, uh, in a while and I always put lots of cat gifs in, this is an inbred cat. So I want to thank you again so much for this. This is uh, me at my first MozCon. I'm trying to think of a good, there's a joke in here somewhere because I've learned what to eat since then and lost a lot of weight. Nobody got the joke, sad. Oh, some of, our, some of you are getting it. Um, again, I really want to encourage any of you who are trying to build EAT uh, and trying to accomplish something for yourself or for your clients, it can be done. So thank you again so much for having me here.